Hello, I'm Julia Delbecki, and I'm the Educational Resource Director here at the Jimenez Facio House Museum. I also often portray Juana Jimenez, and welcome to our segment, Storytime at the Jimenez Facio House, with our very own director, Dr. Roger Smith. How are you all doing today? It's Valentine's Day. Is that exciting? Some people hate Valentine's Day. They think, oh, this is just this is just for couples only, and I don't want to have to feel forced. You know what? It's fun. It's just fun, and that's what we're doing today. We have a story here in Gwyn Fiddletown for Valentine's Day. We call it that crazy feeling. Let's get into this. Oh, by the way, we're here in our guest parlor in the Facio House Museum, and this is where they would come after dinner, and they would play uh, chess, and they had this, this wild card game that they used to play called Lou, L-O-O. And uh, I've got to look that up, figure out how to play this sometime. But, uh, so we're here in the guest parlor enjoying, enjoying a new room for Valentine's Day and that crazy feeling. It was Valentine's Day in Gwynfiddle Town, the day for all sweethearts in love, to show how they feel as they walk hand in hand while Cupid shoots darts from above. Now, Cupid is someone we have to discuss before our sweet tale can continue. He quiets the heartaches of many poor souls. As for weapons, he has quite a menu. He has arrows for those who don't want to love and arrows for people who do. He has arrows for boys just learning of girls and arrows for men 92. He'll make you smile when you want to cry or give your poor heart such a pain. You can try to resist this advisor of love but you really have nothing to gain. For when his arrows fly true to their mark, no doctor on earth can revive you. You only can hope to pass some advice to those who will someday survive you. Your heart starts to pound and your head feels light, like you're walking in clouds way above. You can try to resist it, but brother, you're hooked. There's no use denying you're in love. Well, it just so happened in Gwynfiddle Town that a young girl had been asked to choose between two boys who loved her and cherished her heart and neither desired to lose. The first boy was rugged and strong as an ox, but his manners were gentle and kind. He was handsome and good and his big heart was true. She possessed every thought of his mind. He told every person in Gwynfiddle Town that his love was as big as the moon. His eyes lit up bright as he thought of this girl. You could see how she made his head swoon. Whenever I see her, he told all the folk, or hear someone speak her sweet name, a feeling comes over me I can't control, and yes, every time it's the same. My hands start to sweat, I can't make them stop, and my stomach feels terribly sick. I try not to look quite so clammy and weak, but believe me, it's no easy trick. I hardly can talk, because my mouth gets dry, and my throat refuses to swallow. My chest starts to hurt, like my heart will explode, but my head feels perfectly hollow. My love is so strong, I can't hardly stand it. It's easy to see I'm not lying. There's only two things that can hit me this way. I'm either in love, or I'm dying. Now the second young man was shy in his ways. He never would talk very much. He was friendly and kind to all that he met, and polite to old ladies and such. The people in town really liked this young man, but they gave him no great deal of chance. He never would talk of his love for this girl, and he never showed signs of romance. But as fate would have it this Valentine's Day, the young girl would finally decide. One boy would have a young heart to repair, and one boy would have a new bride. Now the girl was brought up proper and fine, there'd be no such public display. She would tell each boy in private for sure, and do it in her own special way. As the clock struck noon in Gwynfiddle Town, one boy felt as high as the sun. A crowd gathered round for the obvious news. They were sure it was boy number one. But that first young lad was not happy at all. His head was bent, his heart broken. The crowd was quite silent and shocked to be sure. No words of encouragement spoken. But one young lady had just moved to town and was confused at the sight of the scene. So what's going on, she wondered out loud. Is it you, is it him, or between? The boy cleared his throat, but kept his head low. It's him, he said fairly firm. 
Then he choked back tears, so to finish his speech, everyone started to squirm. I just can't believe it, one man said aloud. You're so much in love with each other. You spoke of this girl with endless delight. How could she marry another? It's true, said the lad. I spoke on and on of the love that I had for this girl. How her eyes were so bright, her smile so fresh, her hair had that just certain curl. I loved her so much, oh, how shall I say it? She knew how to make my heart stir. But while I was here telling you of my love, he was over there telling her. The crowd was in silence. Some started to weep. But how could he ever recover? But the new girl in town felt happy and said, You can always find you another. The crowd was in shock. The boy outraged. He whirled to attack like a bear. What he found looking back was a beautiful lass who was almost his height with red hair. Then before he could help it, his palms had sweat. Butterflies invaded his tummy. His throat went dry as it hurt him to clear it. His mouth was parched and felt gummy. His chest was now pounding, but he couldn't tell because his head was as light as a feather. He took the girl's arm and said, strolling off, My, aren't we having nice weather? The crowd went crazy and started to cheer. Somewhere fireworks exploded. There are no sad endings in Gwynfiddle Town. Cupid just smiled and reloaded.